first time we met, she propositioned me. She seemed so sure. I was sure. It was so shy and mysterious. Is there something you'd like to tell me? Is there something you'd like to know? I'm your wife. I know everything. Could you help me with something? You will not tell anyone about this. <laughs> There. <laughs> We're going to call you Lily. <laughs> I want to sketch you. Lily. We should go out tonight. Give them something different. Lily. You're exquisite. <laughs> You're different from most girls. I feel I'd need to ask your permission before I kissed you. There was a moment when I wasn't me. There was a moment when I was just... Lily. But Lily doesn't exist. We were playing a game. Something changed. He's lost his way. He needs a friend. Let me help. I think Lily's thoughts. <laughs> her dream, her dreams. She was always there. I need my husband. I need to hold my husband. <laughs> The fact is, I believe that I'm a woman. And I believe it too. The surgery has never been attempted before. You're my own life. It could kill you. It's my only hope. This is not my body. I have to let him go. I love you. Because you're the only person who made sense of me. Who made me possible. So this movie is directed by Tom Hooper. And when I saw Tom Hooper's big breakthrough movie a few years ago, The King's Speech, what really struck me about it was that it just looked like an Oscar winner. I was like, wow, Tom Hooper really speaks the visual language of award season. And it turns out he was fluent in it as the King's Speech was the big winner that year. But just because you can speak Oscar's language visually doesn't mean uh, Academy Award voters are always listening. Because while Hooper's follow-up Les Mis certainly had a lot of nominations and some wins, it wasn't quite the sweeper that the King's Speech was. And also another uh, director who's in a similar position, Bennett Miller, uh, he swept with Capote, which also looked like an awards winner, but while Foxcatcher also looked like an awards winner, and uh, Money Moneyball did not look like an awards winner, but it's the same director. Uh, but he went back to that kind of visual language with Foxcatcher, but it just didn't work out that time uh, during awards season. So the question is, will it work here with the Danish girl? And I, I think yes. I have the exact same gut reaction as I did when watching the King's speech, and that's that you know, I think awards voters are going to have a Pavlovian response to this because I think that it's not only a beautiful looking movie, but it's it's an it's it's um an intelligent intelligent creative artistic decisions are being made here because you can see that both uh, Eddie Redmayne's character and Alicia Alicia Vikander's character are artists, and Hooper has made the movie look like a painting. And that's really smart. That is the kind of meta. Uh, and, you know, they like plain meta as well, as you can see Birdman won last year. But that kind of layering. And, you know, we just talked about subtext yesterday with um, Star Wars and John Boyega's Finn fighting uh, Adam Driver's Kylo Ren in the forest and what subtext might be there about race relations. I, you know, I said that it was a, a black man fighting a neo-Nazi in the woods. And that subtext should be at least somewhat addressed because it's there, whether you like it or not. Uh, and I think that it's important to acknowledge that subtext. And when you have a really masterful filmmaker, uh, you see them doing it here. And this is a reverse situation, actually, by the way, where the big social issue is at the forefront, transgender, but then they're layering it with other things to just to really 
hook you and make you immersed in it and uh, they create almost like a trap uh, to, to box you in. And, and so I'm really impressed with that level of filmmaking. It's very, very clever. And you can bet that when they're doing their awards talks to promote this movie, when they have the actor and actors and the director come and talk to awards voters uh, to, you know, sell and pitch their movie for, for a win, they're going to bring that up, uh, as they should, because to, to mimic, you know, it reminds you of like famous Degas paintings, etc. It just has that quality to it. And I, I, I think that's what surprised me because I'd heard Eddie Redmayne was going to be a revelation here and that does seem to be the case. But I hadn't expected that visual language. Uh, and, you know, I guess what happened with Les Mis is that Hooper focused on the realism of the performances. They were all performed live on, 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 uh, when they were filming, whereas most musicals they sing b beforehand, just as, they, as they've done, interestingly enough, with the new Beauty and the Beast that's coming out for Disney, and then they lip sync to it uh, when they're actually filming on the soundstage. Uh, but that's not what they did with Les Mis, and that created uh, something that had, I think, one of the best musical soundtracks of all time, and one of the reasons I think Anne Hathaway walked away with that Oscar. Uh, but so here, Hooper seems to be back to focusing on the visual, which I think is important because film, of course, is a visual visual medium. And now I have to touch on Redmayne, who, as I said, looks like a revolution. I'm just so impressed with his performance here. Uh, uh, just as his wife in the trailer, as you can see, comes to believe that he is a woman, I am I believe it, and I'm just seeing the trailer, uh, you know, a, a, a woman trapped in a man's body. I think that his performance seems vulnerable. I think it seems raw. Uh, and I think it just really it catches you off guard. Even if you're preparing yourself for how good it's going to be, you're just not you, he feel, you feel like she is bearing her soul to you. And I think that's very important, not only as from an actor's perspective, but that's the whole crux of the transgender argument. What is the soul? The soul is different than the body. So I'm very impressed. And I think that about Ray, uh, it was having some problems already. I've heard a number of you say that the director isn't uh, using the proper uh, um, uh, you know, he or she reference to the Dakota fan, I mean, the Al Fanning character. Uh, so that was already a problem, but I just don't see it being able to compete with, with this film, which is just uh, absolutely fantastic, top to bottom. Everybody is really digging deep to create a work of art. So I'm curious, what do you think? What do you think of the visual language of the film? What do you think of Eddie Redmayne's performance? And do you think about Ray has a chance uh, in terms of being the transgender film of the year? What a, what a bunch of progress, huh? Who would ever think that we'd have uh, two transgender movies to choose from. All right, write your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, uh, and you can check out some other episodes right now.